When Beverly Carter received a call from a man who was interested in viewing a home for him and his wife, she jumped at the opportunity. It would be the last home showing she ever did. everyone and welcome back to killer concepts the place where we talk about all things true crime and my channel my name is Peyton today we are going to be talking about the murder of Beverly Carter Carter was a real estate agent who was kidnapped and murdered her death started a huge movement to make sure real estate agents were being as safe as possible in the workplace especially when their job majorly consists of meeting strangers her story is is a really sad one just like all of the stories we talk about but I think this one should be a pretty short video overall. I've been looking at buying a home recently and so I thought this would be a good one to discuss especially when it is a real issue. These people are out alone all the time um, coming into contact with strangers. With that being said, let's get started. Beverly Carter was a 50-year-old Arkansas realtor, mother, and wife of almost 35 years on the day she was murdered. Carter was actually one of the top 10 real estate agents at that time and had once sold $12 million worth of real estate in a single year. According to the Beverly Carter Foundation, she would start her day off on September 25th, 2014, a little lucky. Carter had won $50 in a competition at the real estate company she worked at, but what would start out as a wonderful day would end as a disastrous one. Carter had planned to finish the beautiful fall day by taking her husband some dinner after work. They had been married almost 35 years. However, before doing so, she would call her husband to let him know that she had one last showing at 6 p.m. to do before she could head home. Carter had gotten a call from a man who said he and his wife would like to check out a property. Of course, as she had done many times before in her long career as a realtor, she would say yes to taking them. She made sure to ask if his wife was going to be there and he said yes. According to those who knew Carter, she always liked to make sure she wasn't alone when showing homes for safety reasons. As most realtors do, she would arrive in her brown Cadillac SUV at the address 14202 Old River Scott Drive in Scott, Arkansas alone. When she arrived at the home and the man who she was meeting, who was calling himself Stephen Adams, was alone, she decided to do the showing anyway. This would be the the last time she would ever be seen alive again. When Carter's husband, Carl Sr., would not hear back from Beverly at all, he would call his son at around 8.30 p.m. to tell him that he could not reach her. Their son, Carl Carter Jr., would at first shrug it off because apparently his father could be a bit overprotective, but he decided to drive by the real estate office where she worked to check out the situation anyway. While Carter Jr. checked out the real estate state office and saw that all the lights were off, the parking lot was empty, and there was nothing going on, Carl Sr. would drive out to the property that she had been showing. But when he would arrive there, this is when things would seem a little strange. So on Old River Road, when he pulled in, he would find Beverly's Cadillac parked in the driveway with her purse inside the vehicle, but there was no Beverly to be found. The front door to the home was also wide open which is super unusual. A real estate agent wouldn't leave it like that. And even if they were inside the home, it's very unlikely that they would have left the door wide open. So Carl Jr. would call the police to report his mother missing. At this scene, detectives would immediately suspect that something was very wrong. Carter's husband, Carl Sr., would give the detectives the keys to Beverly's vehicle. This is where they would see her credit cards were still inside her purse, pointing to 
no sign of robbery, as well as a notebook where she had written down the appointment time with an email and a phone number of the person that she was supposed to meet. Detectives would also see dust on the floor of the home that had been disturbed by walking, so pretty much footprints, but there was also a distinct mark in the dust that made it look like somebody had laid in it, not just walked in it, and this was very unusual. With this information and the suspicious way they found Beverly's car, they would start a search. Many local realtors would end up involving themselves in the search, and they would even go as far to handing out flyers and joining search parties to help find their fellow realtor. But it wouldn't take long for police to find themselves a suspect. They would quickly look at 33-year-old Aaron Lewis as a suspect in the disappearance. Only days after him becoming a suspect, on September 28, 2014, the Pulaski County Sheriff's Office would issue an arrest warrant. Not long after, he would be taken into custody and charged with capital murder, robbery, and kidnapping, according to ABC News. Investigators would also announce at around this time that Carter's body Body had been located using cell phone data that led them in the direction of a concrete plant where Aaron Lewis had once worked. But why would he target 50-year-old Beverly Carter? Apparently, there was no other real reason except that she, quote, was just a woman that worked alone, a rich broker, end quote, stated Lewis when talking to reporters. Oxygen states that Captain Simon Haynes just thought that Beverly was a target of opportunity. While police originally believed that Aaron Lewis had acted alone, this theory would soon change. And a month later, a woman named Crystal Lowry, 41, Aaron Lewis's wife, would be arrested and charged with capital murder and kidnapping as well. At first, there was not many details on this case as investigators and prosecutors kept the details close to the vest and the judge had made the court documents sealed. But the Arkansas Democrat Gazette reported that Lowry would turn on her husband and give new insight to the case in exchange for a reduced sentence to first degree murder if she pled guilty. When Lowry would testify in court in 2016, she would explain that the original plan had been to kidnap Beverly Carter, take her to the concrete plant where they would abandon her, and then they would make ransom demands for her. When the two would get to the plant with Carter, they would see that changes had occurred at the plant, which would prevent their plan from moving forward in the way that they had planned it. Aaron Lewis had Carter tied up in the trunk of his car and nowhere to take her, so he would come up with a new plan. Oxygen states that Lowry said the following about her conversation with Lewis. Quotes, where are you going to take her because I don't want her at the house, end quote. Lowry testified she had asked him at the time. Quote, he didn't have anywhere to take her and he was driving around and he said he could get pulled over at any moment and he needed to get off the road, end quote. So with things not going according to their plans, prosecutors said that Lewis would end up bringing Beverly Carter to his home in Jacksonville, where both Lowry and himself would keep her in their bathroom tied up. They would keep her bound with duct tape and Lewis had left Lowry with a stun gun to guard Carter while he would drive back to the scene of the kidnapping, the property where he was supposed to meet her, to get her purse. But when Lewis would get to the property, it would be swarming with police officers and so he would never be able to get the purse and he would have to leave without it. The couple would also have Carter record a 12-second ransom message to ask her husband to basically cooperate or it could be bad, but her husband would not hear this message until after his wife was already gone and dead. The ransom plan would end up being abandoned, though, because Aaron Lewis feared that Beverly Carter had at some point seen his face, and he didn't want her to be able to 
recognize him and he was also worried that she may have seen his name on bottles of prescription medicine that had been in the bathroom. This is when both Lewis and Lowry would decide to just get rid of Carter altogether and get rid of the problem. Carter's captors would kill her in one of the most disturbing ways. They would wrap her head in duct tape and they would leave that on her until she suffocated to death while her hands were taped behind her back. And this just, the idea of suffocating has always frightened me and my heart just goes out to her family because this is a terrible way for one of your family members to pass away. She would then be taken to be dumped at the concrete plant behind a building and this is where police would eventually find her body. Investigators would be able to confirm that Carter's body had in fact been in Aaron Lewis's car as they found duct tape in his car with her hair on it inside. When this case would go to trial, defense attorney Bill James would try and pretty much pin everything on the victim, Beverly Carter, which really upsets me. I hate when we automatically resort to victim blaming. I know he's a defense attorney, but just trying to smear somebody's name when they are very clearly a victim is very disgusting to me. He would basically say that Beverly Carter had been having marital and financial troubles and maybe even an affair and she had went to meet Aaron Lewis and his wife for a sexual tryst trying to cast her in a bad light and make her look like not the woman that she really was. In response to this on the stand Carl Sr. Beverly's husband according to the Arkansas Democrat Gazette would say that there had been previous problems in the marriage but they had gotten past them there had been a previous affair he had even punched her once when he was drunk but it never happened again and they were on really good terms and so this argument by the defense was not enough to sway the jury and on January 15th 2016 Aaron Lewis was found guilty on the counts of capital murder and kidnapping for the murder of beloved realtor wife and mother Beverly Carter who was 50 years old at the time of her death per Arkansas online quote prosecutor said Carter a married mother of three died in in agony and terror as she suffocated under green tape that Lewis had wrapped across her face after his and his wife's plans to hold her for ransom fell apart end quote while her family was devastated by the death of their loved one they were obviously happy that somebody had been convicted of the murder of their family member they were finally getting some sort of justice I don't think these families ever really have closure but they were, somebody was being held accountable for the murder of their loved one. Beverly Carter's death would have a huge effect on the real estate industry and how they would handle realtor safety. Carter's son, Carl Jr., would partner with Arkansas Realtor Association to train agents on life-saving practices, and he would also found the Beverly Carter Foundation to honor his mother and increase awareness. This is a website that I have linked down down below in my sources if you want to check it out. To continue his mom's legacy, he would also become a real estate agent himself. And an article for Realtors Magazine, Carl Jr. stated, quote, I still can't fathom that my mom was murdered while doing the job she loved so much. She was an angel among us, and I strive to honor her life and legacy with everything I do. And I want all real estate professionals to join me. Let's fight on, end quote. The story of Beverly Carter is a very scary one because it is very real. There has been multiple real estate agents that have been harmed or attacked or even murdered. Beverly Carter's case just really brought a lot of it to light and how important safety is, how it's important not to go out alone, especially when you don't know somebody. It's different if you personally know the person you're showing a house to, but if it's somebody you have never talked to before, it's really 
really important to maybe follow a buddy system, even if it can be hard to do sometimes, and go out with somebody else as well, because there are always going to be predators out there, and so it's so important to be cautious and really talk about things like this, because these kind of cases, like Carters help raise awareness. They help bring this kind of thing to light because uh, like her her son says in the Realtors Association article, which is also linked down below, that people had told him that's like one in a million chance that something like that will happen. That'll never happen to me. But people say that stuff and then they are the ones who something may happen to. So it's just important to bring light to these kinds of situations. My heart goes out to Beverly Carter's family, even though it was almost 10 years ago that she was murdered. They still have to go through a grieving process every year if they're still not grieving. When the date comes around, they have to deal with it. So my heart goes out to her family just like it does to any murder victim's family. With that being said, that is all I have on this case today and I'm hoping to have one on time to you next week as well but we will see what life hands me. And before you go, please make sure to hit that red subscribe button down below and turn on your post notifications if you have not done so already. Also, if you have any case suggestions, please send them to killerconceptsblog at gmail um, and follow me on social. All of my handles are linked down below in the description box. Before you go, just remember that the world's most dangerous minds hide in the most unlikely places. Stay safe.